Now, when I first saw this site, I was kind of presented with a place that was underwater. And uh, the first thing that came into my mind that what to build here or how to build here. But one thing, that this was not a very unfamiliar site for me because we are from a country, a Delta country, the Bengal Delta, and floodplains are very much part of that Delta. Traditionally, our forefathers, they had devised ways to live in this kind of particular landscape in the floodplain. What would be that approach? One would dig up a pond and with the earth, they would build a mound and on the top of the mound they would put their houses. This is how the construction in the floodplain in our villages where it used to be built up. Ponds were dug because ponds also provided supply of water. At that time there wasn't much of a use of this bore wells that we are using at this time. But what has happened over the years, and especially in the recent time, with our technological development and innovation, one is that we no longer require the ponds. We are more dependent on the bore wells. And the other is the wholesale filling up of all these floodplains, the precious wetlands, by a technique of pumping sand from barges. These barges are bringing sands from questionable dredging operation is in place and sand is being lifted from the beds of the river without any scientific study most probably because we read that a lot of erosions are also happening because of this unscientific sand dredging. So I was not going to do that. I think that this wholesale filling up business is creating serious environmental havoc for Bangladesh. Then I adopted, uh, I, I, I studied the option of having it on the stills and I found that it will work. I have to fix a level that this is the maximum flood level but two reasons. One is that during the dry condition it will be having an unusual height because that area experiences about three meters of water rise and this is for small children who are in preschool so I, I make a structure which is uplifted uh, at, at a height uh, like that they are in, up in the air and the other was the cost so the next option that we looked into is to build something which was going to be amphibious and we wanted to devise something very simple so by using this used steel drums, bamboo and all these things, so we devised this way. I'm not saying that this is the solution for all our uh, requirements in the floodplain. What we are trying to communicate that each and every place has particular characteristics, particular qualities. And when you're talking about architecture, we must take into consideration that. So we must think about the air, we must think about the rain, we must think about the sun, we must think about the vegetation. We must think about not only that particular plate, but all other plots not the, uh, which are around you, all other people which are around you. And in that way we can develop a very holistic approach to architecture. And that's what I would like to say about the beginning of this particular project. I've been very fortunate 
that I was born here in Bangladesh. I've studied architecture in Bangladesh because this has made me experience few, I mean experience some people and some work who had a lasting, uh, left a lasting impression or ins been a big source of inspiration for the work that I have been doing and the work that I'm doing. So I think without that, probably I wouldn't have been able to do what uh, you are seeing, what you are experiencing. So I will list them. The first to name is a person, Masul Islam. If I hadn't come across Masul Islam, I don't know. I really can't tell that whether I would have been able to do the kind of works that I'm doing. Number two, Dui Khan. And the other person is Razul Hassan, much younger to the both. He is four years older than me. And I came to know him when I was studying architecture. His enthusiasm of doing things new, something that has not been tried before, also has been inspirational for me. Mazi Islam, Louis Khan and Rajul Hassan, they all combine as an inspirational force when I got involved in this uh, study circle later on, which was an architect's society called Chetona, and the combination of and the activities of Chetona, which span for two decades, the 80s and 90s, had a profound influence in my thinking process, in my working process, and the way I would like to see myself in life, in future, and in today. Saying about Masjid Islam, I very much feel if you're really going to look into a better Bangladesh in terms of physical environment, future, uh, physical future of towns, future of infrastructure, we have to go to Masjid Islam. He's not here. He's not with us, but his writings are there, his drawings are there, and there are people who work with him, they're also here. So we can take this effort of going to Mazar Islam to find the way forward for a better environment, for a better Bangladesh, for a better city, everything, better, good architecture, Smart Islam. That's what I feel.